Live at 6, it's Knee Breaking News. Good evening and welcome to Knee Breaking News at 6. I'm Hall of Famer Bob. Tonight we will take a look at some world news, a heartwarming human interest story, and of course sports and weather. But first, Card Unity News with Bears Cards. Take it away, Brian. Thanks, Bob. I'm here at the BC34 Live Desk to provide an update on recent Card Community News. With the Chicago Bears coming off a big Super Bowl XX victory, collectors are scrambling to pick up some of the top Chicago Bears players, like Mike Singletary, Jim McMahon, and of course, the great Walter Payton. For those of you who have been dining out at McDonald's, now is the perfect time to redeem your Chicago Bears McDonald's cards for some free food. Wait, no, no, no. Brian, what are you talking about? Brian, that Bears team won the 1985 season. Bob, I'm sorry. My producers are in my ear saying that I'm sharing old news. Like most Bears fans, I'm constantly living in 1985. Let me see if I can get to more current news. With the sports card market booming right now, one sports card investor is reporting that Will Greer, right now, is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. So be sure to pick up your Will Greer cards ASAP. Brian, that was like two years ago. Live in the now. Yeah, come on, Brian. You're almost there. My bad. Okay, in more recent news, it appears Brad8671 was recently offered a trade by a collector who wishes to remain anonymous for all of Brad's Dan Marino autographed cards for a 1992 Upper Deck Carlos Huerta rookie card. No word on if he's accepted the deal, though he is likely seriously mulling this over. We'll keep you posted in later news reports. In other news, Brett McGrath, host of the podcast Stacking Slabs, recently celebrated a milestone with his 300th episode. For the podcast episode, Brett brought in fellow collectors to share what they have learned collecting throughout the years and the value of collecting. Additionally, popular YouTuber, baseball card collector, investor, dealer... In that order! ...announced he and his family are moving from the Netherlands back to the U.S. after a few years away so he can get more involved in the card community, attending shows, and buying more cards. Bob, this just in. We have breaking news. I'm getting word that Brad8671 has declined the trade offer and the Marino Autos will be staying put. I repeat... Brad has declined the Carlos Huerta trade offer. Back to the news. Sports Card Professor recently announced a new channel to highlight major trading cards across all major sports. Also, TikTok has recently announced a ban on sports card breakers. We'll keep you posted if other platforms follow suit. Ian and Nikki from If Sports Cards recently had episode 155 of Wife Pack Wars. Ian won the most recent pack battle, though Nikki leads overall with 82 wins to Ian's 72. Recently, Junk Wax Investor listed the top-selling Junk Wax era cards of the last couple weeks. In basketball, the top card was a 1993 Ultra Michael Jordan Scoring Kings PSA 10, which sold for $10,150. In baseball, the top spot was a 1992 Donruss Ken Griffey Jr. Elite Series PSA 10, which sold for $2,652. And in football, the number one spot was the 1994 Topps Finest Jerry Rice Refractor PSA 10, which sold for $2,750. And I'll end my report with our Rumors and Gossip segment. We have it from many unreliable sources that John Mangini and Jimmy Guns are planning a charity fighting match to take place in April. They're finalizing the deals, but according to sources, Jimmy Guns is negotiating for John Mangini to not use his nunchucks, while Mangini is asking for Jimmy Guns to not use his muscles. That will do it from BC34 Studios. Bob, back to you. Well, great stuff. Coming up next, world news and current events with my dad, Lou Rock. But first, a word from our sponsor. Do you love beans? Of course you do. Everybody loves beans. That's why you need to come on down to Reindeer's Magic Bean Emporium. We've got all the beans. We've got baked beans. We got lima beans. We got pinto beans. We got black beans. We got jelly beans. We got green beans. We even got page and genie beans. 
Not sure what beans to get? Get a can of mystery beans. Need that perfect gift? Get them a subscription to the brand new Bean of the Month Club. We've got everything to meet your beanie needs. So come on down to Reindeer's Magic Bean Emporium and get yourself some beans. We're open 24 seven, so come on down anytime and tell them Scott sent ya. Hey, beautiful people. I'm Blue Rock here to bring you some hard hitting news. Earlier this month, Kim Yo Jong, who is the influential sister of the North Korean dick tater, see why they're there, warned the United States of America and the rest of the world that their country is ready for quick and overwhelming action against the U.S. and South Korea. This is a response to the U.S. and South Korea who are training together in the region. The U.S. actually flew a nuclear-capable B-52 bomber in a demonstration of strength against North Korea. So, of course, North Korea, in response to that, uh, fired two strategic cruise missiles from their submarine to show uh, their water offensive capabilities. And when I say to that, America, bring it. North Korea doesn't want none of this. Ooh, I'm strong, baby. And some lighter news, and huge step forward to gender equality. Women can now swim topless in Berlin's public swimming pools. Look it up, it's hilarious. But it's true, they can swim topless. All this because a female swimmer was kicked out by security because she refused to cover herself up at a public pool. So she did the American thing. I know it's in Berlin, but she sued them. She sued the country. She sued the pools. She sued everybody for gender discrimination. And now everyone can swim topless, regardless of gender. I just wish people fought for real issues with the same energy. Like, who else? Well, how many people want this? I don't know. And that's just me. But there will be an uptick in Berlin tourism from male tourists. I can promise you that. Now on to some current events. In Oscar news, so much buzz, huge ratings from last year's Oscar show. I wonder why. <laughs> the Academy decided to have another comedian host this year's awards, Jimmy Kimmel. Now Kimmel is not as funny as Chris Rock. Not by, it's not even close. But this is his third time hosting the award show. So at least the Academy knows what they got. Some of not funny. <laughs> but the big news of this Oscar award show was Brendan Fraser, 30 years in Hollywood, won the Oscar for Best Actor for The Whale. Man, that's a long way from movies like <laughs> The Mummy, <laughs> Bedazzled, George of the Jungle, and still my favorite and his greatest achievement, Encino Man. All right. Let's take a break for today's sponsor, Jefferson's Ocean, Age of the Sea. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. The news is depressing. So I'm Irish today. Speaking of Oscar news, last year's Oscar host, Chris Rock. The dude is crushing it with his Netflix special, Selective Outrage. Chris Rock has stayed silent all year in regards to the slap heard around the world. From now, disgraced movie actor and rapper Will Smith. That cat is not getting jiggy with it, I can promise you that. Rock and lows on Will Smith. Dude has a lot of pent up rage. But Chris Rock intelligently speaks on a lot of today's issues in a way only Chris Rock can. It is a must watch. Check it out, Netflix. Highly recommend. Blue Rock approved. So finally, closing out our segment of current events and world news. Wait, wait, it's just in. Oh yeah, I think you're right. The age old question has just been answered. And that question is, <laughs> yo Scotty Pippen, why the long face? <laughs> Well, I have your answer. Scotty Pippen, now ex-wife, Larsa, Larsa Pippen, who was married to Scotty for 24 years, has now been seeing and rumored to be dating Michael Jordan's younger son, Marcus Jordan, who is age 31. Poor Scotty, can't catch a break. <laughs> always in the shadow, always in a Jordan shadow. But you know what, what do you expect? Some Jordan, any Jordan, if your last name is Jordan, will always be taking the last shot. 
<laughs> Back to you, Bob. Back at the main studios. Done already? Fantastic reporting there, Lou Rock. Up next, we've got Reindeer Studios with a heartwarming story about a Minnesota man paying trivia to a YouTube legend. Thanks, Bob. I'm here with Dustin Abraham, who out of the kindness of his heart has decided to give some talentless, nerdy YouTubers a spotlight in which to shine. And the results have been amazing. Dustin, tell us a little bit about your project. Hey, thanks for having me, Scott. Well, I uh, started this thing called Dustin's Royal Rumble here as a tribute to the late YouTuber legend Ricky Russo, you know. And what I wanted to do was uh, bring together the community a little bit there and uh, give these guys a chance to show to the world that they have some talents because, uh, quite frankly, you know, these sports card videos, I don't know, they're pretty easy to make and they don't get a lot of views generally. But I thought if they did something worth watching, then the people might, you know, take notice, you know. And how's it going so far? Oh, well, horrible, but in a good way, yeah? These videos are darn awful, you know? Kind of like my accent. I can't really tell if it's Minnesotan or Canadian, yeah? Well, I think it's a lovely accent, but you're saying these videos are like a train wreck? Darn tootin', you know? But a train wreck that doesn't release those uh, toxic chemicals in the air and doesn't pollute the water supply then. A real eco-friendly train wreck, you know? They're so bad, they're good kind of deal, you know? Well, that sounds really intriguing. Can you describe some of the videos they've done? You betcha. I asked some of them to show off their pets in that, and there was this one guy that started making out with his darn cat. It was really weird, you know? I mean, geez. What a weirdo. Right, and then there was this guy, Eddie, that was supposed to do a darn tongue twister, but he was too lazy to write one himself, you know? So he used that darn AI to write one for him, you know? And then he couldn't even say it. I don't know. It was just a real horror show then. Wow, some people. Well, what would you say the worst video has been so far? Oh yeah, you know, there's this guy who wants to be called Four Leaf, even though everybody knows his name and that. Like he's trying to be all mysterious and hide his darn identity for some reason, right? And he's not even a superhero or nothing. So anyway, I asked for some stupid human tricks, you know, and I certainly got an overdose of stupid. I do have a clip here to show you. All right, let's play that clip. Yo, what is up, YouTube? Thanks for clicking. This is your boy, Four Leaf, uh, Collector Connect, right? I'm part of the Filthy Five. Why am I filthy? Because I play with cows for a living. Yes, king of the trash talk right here. And um, uh, it's time for stupid human tricks, but I don't got no stupid human tricks. I'm going to hold a hot flame in my hand. Check it out. Oh, look at that. Hot flame, hot fire in my hand. It's amazing, right? Right, okay. Also, I can speak Spanish. Check it out. Mi amo cuatro lifo. Ha! Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, yo quiero Taco Bell. Right. Uh, give me a margarita. All right, all right. Amazing, amazing. Collect connect. Wow. Okay, filthy four. No, no, no. Filthy five. Yeah, five. Oh. Uh, Collect to connect. Four leaf out. I'm kind of speechless. What an absolute lack of talent. But at the same time, I can't look away. You betcha. And then, you know, he makes his son take part in the videos too, right? To make his videos all cute or whatever. I mean, who exploits their kids like that? You know, it's so cheap. But yeah, they've all been delightfully bad, you know, really fun to watch in that. And what a way to honor Ricky Russo. Darn tootin' right, you know. Go Twinkies. So is this going to be an annual event or have you had enough? Oh, sure. I don't know. I'm a glutton for punishment, but maybe, you know, maybe if I get enough people interested in doing it again, then yeah, but maybe no. This obviously couldn't get any worse then, right? So is that a yes or a no? Maybe, yeah, no, I don't know. Well, that's just great, Dustin. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Have a great day, sir. Oh, you betcha. You too, then. Back to you, Bob. Nicely done, Scott. Dustin's definitely doing some good work there. It's really great to see next up your favorite weatherman and mine. Here's Maza with the weather. Let's keep it PG. Keep it PG? You got it, dude. I'll do my best. And I'm not sure if I'm everybody's favorite weatherman. There's plenty of people who can't stand me. Like former Mets closer Heath Bell. He says my channel sucks, and he still hasn't even accepted my friend request on Facebook. 
Come on, dude. There's others that can't stand me. Sam, Bob, Eloy, Pat, Scott, Mike. What was I doing? The weather, the weather. All right. Here in Columbia, it's 69 degrees. I did not make that up, but that's pretty damn funny. And the allergies are bad. If you live down here, this is pollen season. At night, it's also winter again. In Janesville, Minnesota, at least we don't live there, Dustin's neck of the woods, it's 31 degrees and snowing. Fly that ship. I don't shovel snow no more. Who the hell would want to live up there anyway? It's exceptionally cold. That is exceptionally cold. Remember, Dustin, when that snow melts, there will be wet bushes. And when there are wet bushes, there are wet beards. In Pomona, California, where Caesar Salad lives, Caesar Salad Tosser these days, where he lives, it's 58 degrees. And I'm sure somebody's high on 420 over there. In Howard Beach, Russo's neck of the woods, it's 57 degrees. Russo's guys are still keeping everything in order, if you know what I mean. In Moscow, it's 34 degrees and cloudy. That sure is cold, just like Putin. Quit messing with our Predator drones. You don't want the Air Force to start scooping that ice cream. Okay. In Beijing, it's even colder. 30 degrees, partly cloudy. And a high chance of your party city weather balloon getting shot down by a four hundred thousand dollar sidewander missile. But enough negative. Nancy, we're here to be positive, right? And next week, our very own Parkside Li eighty eight is getting married in Isle of Palms, where it's going to be seventy one degrees, and a good chance of me getting slightly intoxicated. Let's get rowdy, Rob. Yeah. So, there's our weather forecast. I took you a little bit around the world. And I'm going to throw it back to you, Bob. Peace. Thanks, Andrew. That's quite a forecast. Be sure to dress appropriately if you're going outside anytime soon. Finally, tonight we've got Hitman with sports. Take it away, mate. And thank you for those kind words, Bob. It's Hitman23 here with the WRSO Sports for the day. We will start off with the World Baseball Classic. And Japan and Venezuela are your two undefeated teams going into today. Uh, Japan is sitting at 4-0 and and Venezuela is sitting at 3-0. and They look like the team to beat, guys. Um, in other news uh, in, the, in the WBC, we had uh, Puerto Rico throwing the first perfect game in WBC history. It was a combined perfect game. Starter uh, Jose De Leon and the bullpen uh, beat Israel, and they uh, definitely dismantled Israel because they won the game by mercy rule 10-0. So congratulations to Puerto Rico on the first WBC. Perfecto. Next, Kyle Schwarber. The first man to hit a home run in, let's count them guys, the World Series, the ALCS, the NLCS, the ALDS, the NLDS, an AL wildcard game, an NL wildcard game, and yes, you guessed it, the WBC. So hats off to you, Kyle Schwarber. And a little uh, uh, notes from the past. What a, what a way the game has changed, ladies and gentlemen. Last year, Kyle Schwarber, speaking of, Kyle Schwarber struck out 200 times, and Eugenio uh, Suarez struck out about the same, about 196 times. Last baseball season. During the decade of the 90s, the entire decade, Tony Gwynn, there goes my sign, only struck out 188 times during the entire 
decade. So put that in your hat and smoke it, guys. You launch angle guys. So uh, another couple of things I uh, heard today from Dodger Camp. The, uh, the Dodgers will have a uh, giveaway at their first home game. Um, they will be giving out sour pickles to the first 69 fans in attendance. And the Red Sox will be giving away three leaf clovers to the first two people in attendance at their 57th game of the season. So uh, great job, guys. Great job with those giveaways. And uh, that's all I got for sports, guys. You came to WRSO to hear some sports where baseball is the only sport that matters. The views expressed by Hitman do not necessarily reflect the views of this news station. Sportscasters never get any love. This is my segment, Brian. Get out. And I'm going to throw it back to Bob in the main studio. Heck of a job, Mike. Go Yankees. So that's all we got for tonight. Thanks for tuning in with us at Knee Breaking News on WRSO. Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, finally, I'm hungry.